So this here is a cylinder bore, and now we're going to do an easy step-by-step -step DIY guide that's going to show you how to inspect and measure your cylinder bores to see if they are out of round or maybe tapered, and to know for certain if they need reboring or not. In order to measure bores, we're going to need two different measuring devices, a dial bore gauge and an outside micrometer. Now, when it comes to DIY car enthusiasts, our tool arsenal typically doesn't contain either of these tools. This is because when we rebuild engines, most of us just take everything to a machine shop, tell them what we want, and let the machine shop call the shots. But I think we should all, in fact, own these two simple tools and that we shouldn't just blindly leave everything to a machine shop. Wouldn't it be better to know for certain yourself whether you actually need boring or not, and to have actual insight into the condition of your engine? By checking and verifying measurements yourself, you're providing an additional set of eyes and an additional level of verification to your engine, and that's never a bad thing. On top of all of this, you'll be learning a new skill and you'll have better understanding of your engine, which will empower you to make educated decisions on its rebuild. But dial bore gauges and micrometers are expensive. How can a DIY car enthusiast justify their cost when they won't be using them often? Well, this is where sites like Banggood come in. I got my dial bore gauge and set of micrometers for an extremely affordable price from banggood.com. Of course, these aren't professional grade tools, but you really don't need professional grade tools anyway. You won't be using them on a daily basis and we're not really trying to start a machine shop business here. These are perfectly adequate and accurate tools for our purpose. So if you want to learn a new skill and have actual insight into the condition of your engine, you can check these tools out by clicking on the links in the description and the pinned comment. Now the first thing we'll be doing before measuring stuff is to clean and visually inspect our bores. During our visual inspection, we're looking for two things, an absence of damage in the form of deep scratches and scoring and a presence of a crosshatch hone pattern on our bores. If there's an absence of damage and a presence of honing marks, your engine has passed visual inspection. If there's an obvious presence of damage, your bores have failed visual inspection and they will need reboring. This is just a junk block I'm using for demonstration purposes and as you can see, it immediately fails visual inspection. This block had water and or coolant ingress into the cylinder and was sitting for a very long time, which resulted in cylinder number three being completely rusted. If I were to rebuild this engine, I would definitely have this block rebored. On the other hand, cylinder one doesn't really have serious rust and there's even some holding marks present. However, there is increased wear on the trust axis of the bore. Now, increased wear on the trust axis is normal and expected. During engine operation, combustion forces act on the piston crown and because of the piston's position in relation to the conrod and the crankshaft, this part of the bore receives most of the load and therefore most of the wear. This is also why pistons have more skirt material along their trust axis. More skirt along the trust axis helps better support the piston and the bore and helps distribute loads. So cylinder one has an absence of serious damage and even some presence of honing marks, which means that it passes visual inspection, but it does raise some concerns over increased wear. To accurately measure bores, we need to zero our tools. The first thing we'll zero is our micrometer, and to zero it, we need to set it in a vise. It's a good idea to use a soft jaw vise and or some wood, and definitely do not tighten the micrometer too hard, because if you do tighten it too hard, you can distort its shape, and if you distort its shape, then it's going to be useless, and it won't be able to accurately measure anything. We're using a 75 to 100 millimeter micrometer because the bore of our engine is 81 millimeters. To zero it, we'll need our gauge block. Check that the measuring surfaces of the micrometer are clean and tighten them down to the gauge block. Use the small knob to tighten as it ensures that you always tighten everything the same amount and that you do not over tighten anything. Once the gauge block is in place, lock your micrometer and look at the measurements. Because our gauge block is exactly 75 millimeters, that's what we should be seeing on the micrometer. We're close, but as you can see, the zero doesn't align with our 75 mark. So we'll use the little wrench provided with the micrometer and insert it into the pinhole on the back and turn until our marks are perfectly aligned. Once they are, our micrometer has been zeroed. 
Now we're going to consult our factory service manual or any other suitable source to see what kind of board dimensions we should be seeing. This is a Toyota 4AGE engine block and the factory service manual tells us that our STD board dimensions are between 81 and 81.3 millimeters. So we'll set our micrometer to 81 millimeters exactly and lock it again. Now we're going to zero our dial bore gauge to 81 millimeters. This is probably the trickiest part of this whole process and it requires a bit of patience sometimes. We're going to assemble our dial bore gauge by using an attachment of suitable length and then we're going to insert the measuring end of the bore gauge into the micrometer. We will gently and slowly move the bore gauge inside the micrometer as we watch the needle. We're looking for the smallest measurement the needle is taking, or in other words, the point at which the needle stops going further on the gauge. Once we find that, we're going to turn the zero mark on the gauge face to match this location of the needle. This requires some fine hand-eye coordination and usually two to three tries to get it right. Once you've zeroed the bore gauge, we can proceed to the measuring, and we'll be measuring at six different spots to get an accurate assessment of the condition of the bore. So here's our bore, and we'll be measuring at the top, middle, and bottom of both the trust and non-trust axis of the bore. We're looking for two things here, an out of round condition and or a tapered condition of the bores. An out of round condition will reveal itself as a difference between dimensions of the trust and the non-trust axis. And a tapered condition will be present if there's a difference between dimensions at different bore depths. Our factory service manual tells us that the maximum allowable bore diameter is 81.23 millimeters. Anything beyond that calls for the cylinders to be rebored. When measuring at the top, you want to measure below the ridge that's usually present at the top of the cylinder, which means that you'll be measuring around 10 to 15 millimeters below the top. Same thing goes for the bottom. You're measuring some 10 to 15 millimeters above the actual bottom of the cylinder bore. So here's the top of the non-trust side, the middle of the non-trust side, and the bottom of the non-trust side. Now we're switching to the trust side, and again, here we have the top, middle, and bottom. And here we have our measurements. As expected, we do have increased wear on our trust side and a slight out of round condition because of this. But by using the dial bore gauge, we can see that although there is increased wear, it is within tolerances. We also have a very slight taper on the non-trust side, but again, nothing major and definitely within our tolerances. So in a rebuild scenario, this bore would likely be good with a rehone and some new rings. Kinda sad that cylinder number three is such a mess. But now let's imagine that we don't want to reuse this bore. We can't tolerate this slight out of round condition and we simply want brand spanking new bores. How do we determine the size of our new bores? Well, to do that, we need to measure our oversized pistons. When you rebore an engine, you need to get oversized pistons. To maintain a proper piston to wall clearance, an increased bore diameter also calls for an increased piston diameter. Now, the important thing here is that different vehicle brands, as well as different aftermarket piston manufacturers, measure pistons at different spots. It's very important to note where the piston is measured because the piston itself is tapered. It's tapered to allow for different rates of expansion due to its crown receiving more heat than its bottom. If we check our factory service manual, we'll see that the piston is measured on the trust side 42 millimeters from the skirt bottom, which turns out to be just a few millimeters away from the oil ring groove. This is a slightly unusual measurement spot as most others measure closer to the bottom of the skirt. This is why many machine shops would be surprised by this piston to wall occurrence if you didn't tell them where the piston needs to be measured. When measuring, always use the small knob on the micrometer to prevent over tightening and a false measurement. Our piston comes in at just above 81.38 millimeters. I would call this somewhere around 81.383, but we can round it down to 81.38. Our factory service manual gives us a formula for determining our new bore size. It's the piston diameter plus piston clearance minus the allowance for honing. 
in our case that's 81.38 plus 0 0.13 since these are supercharged 4 AGZE pistons we're using and then we deduct 0 0.02 millimeters from that. The result is 81.42 millimeters and this is the new bore size you would need to achieve for this particular piston in cylinder number one. Of course, this is the new bore size only if you're doing a mostly stock or mild rebuild. If you're doing something different, such as a lot of boost or a much higher red line or forged pistons or different types of racing, then your piston to wall clearance would likely need to be increased to suit both the engine modifications and the application. How much it should be increased is decided on a case by case basis while taking into account all the different factors. And there you have it. I hope you enjoy this simple step-by-step -step guide and I hope it helps you better understand your engine and maybe even inspires you to take up some measuring tools yourself and broaden your skill set. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.